Welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss regarding Bluetooth. So, Bluetooth is a wireless LAN technology which is designed to connect a devices of different functions such as telephones, notebooks, computer, camera printers which are at a short distance from each other. A Bluetooth is a LAN technology and it is a LAN of ad hoc networks which means that a network is formed spontaneously. The devices in this arrangement we call them sometimes as a gadgets and they are capable to find each other to make a network called a PicoNet. Bluetooth technology has several applications. One of the common application of this Bluetooth technology is connecting a peripheral devices such as wireless mouse and a keyboards to a computer with the help of Bluetooth to communicate with uh, each other. Say Bluetooth actually it is originally designed or started as a project by Ericsson company. It is named after the king of Denmark who united this Denmark and Norway. Today the Bluetooth technology is an implementation of protocols that is defined by a standard IEEE standard that is 802.15. Basically this standard defines the wireless personal area network operable in the size of a room or a hall. Now we will talk regarding the architecture of Bluetooth. The Bluetooth has a two different types of networks. One is a PicoNet, another is a ScatterNet. Let us start with the PicoNet. So, as shown in this figure, okay, Bluetooth network, which is a small in size, called a PicoNet, or sometimes it is also a small net. A PicoNet can have eight stations one of which is called as a primary. In this case, this is a primary and rest all are secondaries. Apart from this uh, secondaries, all these secondary stations, they synchronize their clocks and a hopping sequences with the primary. This PicoNet can have only one primary station in it. The communication between primary and the secondary station can be one to one or one to many. Even though altogether there are total eight stations, one primary and eight secondary. But PicoNet can have maximum, uh, uh, say, it can have more than seven uh, stations, seven secondary stations, but which cannot be a part of, say, which are, which cannot be uh, participate in communication actively. They are in a park state. We call them as a stations which are in a park state. A secondary in a park state is synchronized with primary. But as I said, they can't take part in a communication until it is moved from this parked state to a active state. If it is in an active state, then it is called as a secondary. Okay. So these stations only allowed to be a secondary if there are less than seven secondary stations. So the maximum restriction is only eight stations which can be in an active state okay including primary 
so this is all about a piconet next is a scatternet so scatternet is a, a say created by combining a multiple scatter uh, piconets so a secondary station in one piconet can be a primary station in a another piconet okay so when it comes to a scatternet this option is allowed you see here in this case this is a primary for this piconet for the second piconet this is our second piconet which is shown over here with this dotted lines so the primary which is over here is participating as a secondary in the first piconet so the station can receive messages from primary in the first piconet and acting as a primary delivery to them to a secondary is in the second piconet station can be a member of two piconets it is also allowed here so we can have a multiple such scatternets to form a uh, multiple such piconets to form a scatternet next is we'll discuss regarding a bluetooth devices so bluetooth devices has a short range radio transmitter built with short range radio transmitters and data rate is somewhere around 1 mbps with 2 gigahertz bandwidth this means that there is a possibility of interference between that 802.11b wireless lan and a bluetooth bluetooth lans okay next is the bluetooth layers bluetooth uses several layers that do not exactly match those of say tcp ip model or internet model so this is shown over here all these layers not exactly matching with our internet model okay so especially this l2 cap s this layer logical link control and adoption protocol l2 cap or l2 here means ll is roughly equivalent to our logical link control layer one which is used in a lan basically it is used for data exchange on acl link so these seo channels do not use l2 cap so that is this particular layer and the frame format one which is used by this particular layer is shown over here okay so the packet format or you can say a frame format looks like this it has a 2 bytes length field 2 bytes channel id field and say 0 to 65535 bytes data and control field the 16 bit say length field here it defines the size of the data in terms of bytes that is coming from the higher layers okay so that I, that is the reason when we say when we are allowing this length field to be of 16 bits long so the maximum number basically it is talking regarding how much data it is carrying so that means it is allowed to carry a data up to 2 raised to 16 bytes that means it is 65k bytes okay it is 65 kilobytes of data it can carry maximum 65 kilobytes so the minimum is 0 bytes okay the l2 cap has a specific duties such as multiplexing segmentation reassembly and quality of service and a group management what exactly this uh, multiplexing means so basically at sender side it accepts the data from 
one of the upper layer protocols frames them and delivers them to a baseband layer at the receiver site okay at receiver site it accepts the frame from the baseband layer ex extracts the data and delivers the data them to a appropriate protocol layer it creates a kind of virtual channel that we can see it in the later part okay uh, which is uh, say similar kind of arrangements also will be seen in the higher layer protocols segmentation and reassembly the maximum size of the payload field in the baseband layer is 2774 bits or you can say it is somewhere around 343 bytes this includes basically four bytes to define the packet and the packet length therefore the size of the packet that can arrive from the upper layer can have maximum of only 339 bytes however a application layer sometimes need to send a data packet that can be up to say 65k so l2cp in such situation required to divide such a large packets into a segments for that reason that segmentation and reassembling is allowed so when it segments it adds some extra information to define the location of the segment segments in the original packet and sequence numbers too required for that okay next is the quality of service the bluetooth allows the stations to define the quality of the service level okay so uh, this is one of the highlights of the bluetooth bluetooth defaults say to what it is called as a best effort service it will do the best under the circumstance next is a group management another functionality of this l2 cap layer it allows the devices to create a type of logical addressing between themselves this is similar to a multicasting that what we discussed in our say internet model say for example two or three secondary devices can be a part of multi multicast group to receive the data from a primary next is a baseband layer baseband layer is roughly an equivalent to a, a max sub layer in a lens the access method that is defined over here is time division multiple access the primary and a secondary stations communicate with each other using a time slots over here the length of the time slot is exactly same as that of say 625 microseconds this means that during the time that one frequency is used primary sends a frame to a secondary or secondary sends a frame to a primary so communication is only between a primary and a secondary secondaries cannot communicate directly with one another which was somewhat similar to our infrastructure network where a two stations cannot directly communicate with each other they can only communicate through aps in a infrastructure wireless networks then the tdma bluetooth as i said it uses a time division multiple access uh, time division multiple access or sometimes tdd tdma we call it as tdd tdma here which is time division duplex tdma this is a kind of half duplex communication in which a sender and a receiver send and receive a data but not at the same time but however 
the communication for each direction uses different hops so this is similar somewhat similar to our walkie talkies which communicate using different frequencies single secondary communication uh, if that is a situation where if a piconet has only one secondary the tdma operation is very simple in this case the time is divided into a slot of 625 microseconds which is shown over here the primary uses a even numbered slots that is 0 2 4 6 like this the secondary uses odd numbers of slots so in the even slot primary sends odd slots secondary sends so this TDD TDMA allows the primary and secondary to communicate in a half duplex mode that is the reason in slot 0 only primary has to send okay and in the say multiple secondary communication situation the process is little more involved if there is more than one secondary in a piconet again primary uses a even numbered slots but secondary sends in the next odd number slot if the packet in the previous slot was addressed to it all secondary stations uh, listen on even numbered slots but only one secondary sends in odd number of slots who is to send that is going to be addressed in the primary slots okay so almost the communication is same as this but only thing is the secondary which is to be sent in this odd number of slots is going to be decided in these frames so this is all about say this multiple secondary communication next is the links two types of links can be created between a primary and a secondary first is seo link and acl link seo link means synchronous connection oriented link which is used when avoiding the latency and is more important than the integrity in SEO link, the physical link is created between primary and secondary by serving specific slots at regular intervals. The basic unit of connection is two slots for one each direction. If the packet is damaged, it is never retransmitted. It is never retransmitted. SEO is used for one real audio where avoiding a delay is all important next is acl link that is asynchronous connection links connectionless link which is used when a data integrity is more important than avoiding the latency that is similar to the applications that what we divide in a network that is one which are of very much say time uh, say uh, very much say uh, time uh, important applications and the second category applications are of the type where accuracy is very important so this acl is a similar to a one where accuracy has given a more importance where data integrity is very important and latency can be tolerable in this type of a link if a payload is encapsulated in a frame and if that frame is corrupted it is retransmitted a secondary returns acl frames in an available odd number of slots again during this time slot only 
say in this uh, odd number of time slots only it returns these frames and say uh, this slot it if say it is previous slot has been addressed to a some specific secondary only that secondary is allowed to transmit next is say the frame format so a frame is a, a baseband layer can be one of the three types okay so one slot three slot or a five slot a slot what we said before is of say 625 microseconds however in one slot frame exchanges 259 microseconds that is needed for hopping and control mechanisms okay so that we will see it here what exactly this means is that one slot frame can last only for 625 to 259 or 366 microseconds with 1 megahertz bandwidth and 1 bit per hertz the size of a time slot will be somewhere around 366 bits okay this is approximately what we have calculated the three slot frame that occupies three slots however that 259 microseconds is used for hop hopping pinging hopping purpose the length of the frame is say 3 into that is say 3 sorry 3 into 625 minus 259 uh, microseconds which will be equal to say 16 one, say 1616 microseconds which will be equal to 16 uh, sorry uh, 1616 bits not microseconds it is bits okay a device that can use a three slot frame remains at the same hop okay so in this we have shown uh, the format of three frames three different types of frames so first is access code this contains a 72 bit value we call it as a 72 bit field it contains a synchronization bits and the identifier of the primary to which is distinguishable say the frame of piconet from that of another next is the header field which is of 54 bits field and there are 18 bit patterns which are repeated each pattern has say these subfields which is shown over here okay all these subfields the first one is address okay this is a repetitive word here in this header so address it is three bit address field uh, address subfield you can say mm, it can define a seven secondaries from one to seven if the address is zero it is used for broadcast communication from primary to all secondaries next is the type field this is four bit field so basically it is defines the type of a data that is obtained or coming from the upper layer next is f field this is one bit subfield basically it is used for a flow control purpose when it is set to one it indicates that the device is unable to receive more frames when it is set to zero it is indication that device is capable of receiving the frames basically 
it is a kind of an indication regarding the status of the buffer what is the state of the buffer at a receiving side it will be indicated with the help of this bit so kind of a warning to the sender a a field this field is a, a subfield used for acknowledgement purpose bluetooth works in stop and wait manner okay so when it is in a stop and wait manner so automatic uh, say a, in a, a arq fashion that one bit is sufficient for acknowledgement that is the reason only one bit is reserved for acknowledgement purpose next is yes bit so this is a kind of a sequence number if acknowledgement is of one bit type since it is in a stop and wait arq mode so sequence number is also a one bit next is hec so it is a 8 bit header error correction field hec indicates header error correction field and is for checksum to detect an errors it provides a checksum to detect an error so in a it 18 bit 18 bit header section it provides a, a checksum the header has three identical 18 bit sections the receiver compares these three sections bit by bit if each of the corresponding bits are same the then the bit is accepted if it is not majority opinion rules this is from the forward error correction say method where it corrects it okay so apc technique is used over here for the correction purpose next field is payload field so it carries maximum of 2740 say bits so that n indicates here 27040 bits so minimum is 0 bits it contains data or control information coming from the upper layers the payload the next layer is uh, say in this case one minute radio layer the radio layer is roughly equivalent to a physical layer of our internet model so bluetooth devices are a low power and have a range up to 10 meters and the band bluetooth uses as it was told at the beginning 2.4 gigahertz ism band which is divided into a 79 channels of 1 megahertz each it uses fhss frequency hopping spread spectrum method in the physical layer basically to avoid interference from other devices and these bluetooths they use say fsk kind of a modulation technique so that is some versions of fsk we call them as gfsk that is fsk with gaussian bandwidth filtering which is used here that we in short we call it as gfsk and it has a carrier frequency bit 1 represented by frequency deviation above the carrier bit 0 here it is represented the frequency deviation below the carrier okay so this is how that fsk arrangement has been used over here so this is regarding the bluetooth the regarding the details of the bluetooth okay so basically a bluetooth is a kind of a ad hoc network which is only for a shorter distance this is all about bluetooth okay so we will stop our discussion over here regarding this bluetooth in the next topic we'll going to discuss regarding cellular telephony 
थैंक यू वेरी मच